All right, so uh, right here we begin discussing section 4.2, Convergence of Laws on Metric Spaces. And this section starts with the so-called portmanteau theorem, okay, which collects several conditions that are equivalent to weak convergence of probability measures. Okay, so what it says is that, one, if you have a sequence of probability measures converges convergent to some probability measure P on a metric space S with a metric D, then this is equivalent to, first of all, in the definition when you check convergence of integrals for continuous bounded functions. Okay, you can restrict yourself to bounded Lipschitz functions instead. Yeah. And this implication from 1 to 2 is obvious because bounded Lipschitz functions is just a subset of continuous bounded functions on our metric space. Now, the next condition is that if you take any open set in S, then the lower limit of probabilities in this sequence Pn of this set will be greater or equal than the limiting probability of this set. Okay, and this implication is also pretty straightforward. Um, I'm going to just skip the proof of it, but the point here is that um, the indicator of an open set can be approximated by indicators, by bounded Lipschitz functions from, from below. Okay, and the way this is done is you just consider a distance from the complement of this open set and you just rescale it and, and, and you see that because you approximate it from below, that's where the limit comes from. Okay. Now, next condition is just an equivalent condition to three. Obviously, that you can, if you take complements, you can you get similar statement for closed sets. Okay, so if you take a closed set in S, then uh, the lim sup of the probabilities of the set along this sequence will be less than or equal than the limiting probability. Okay. Okay, these are obviously equivalent, so if you have one, you automatically have the other. And then the next condition is um, that if you take a set of continuity, so this is a set of continuity of P, and of course what this means is that the probability of the boundary of the set is zero, okay, that's the definition of the set of continuity, then you have the limit. So you don't need to look at the lower limit or upper limit here, you just consider the limit of the probabilities of the set and you get this limiting probability. Now the fact that three and four imply um, Five. This is also obvious because you just um, you know, consider the interior of your set, which is an open set, and then you consider the closure of your set, which is a closed set, and you already have the statement for the open and closed set in the right direction. So for the open set, you get control of the lower limit from below and for the closure you get control from above and because the boundary uh, the probability of the boundary is zero here the interior and the closure in the limit have the same probability so that's why you know you, you get just the limit for your probability okay so the only implication uh, we have to show now is five to one and for that, it's also pretty straightforward. So if you if you have a bounded Lipschitz function, you can <clears throat> approximate it uniformly by um, a step function, where well you simply 
can consider, you know, you can split the range of the function f into small intervals and you consider sum over those intervals of the values, let's say you can round down to the left end point and so you, you take a k indicator when your function f of s is, is between value a k and a k plus one. Okay, and you choose this sequence a k so that the two neighbors are within epsilon from each other and because function f is uniformly bounded you know you only have finitely many values here in this sum and then when you um, look at the integrals of um, this step function right the integral of the indicator will be just the probability of this set okay and if the probability of this set converges to the limiting probability for all of these sets then the integrals will converge and of course you know if this is true for any epsilon that will imply the convergence of, of integrals for the original function and so in order to get the convergence for, for this set you just have to choose these uh, values a k in such a way that, that this this set is a set of continuity so you can apply five and why this is a set of continuity well because you know if you consider this set here the boundary let's say if this is a set bk right then the boundary of this set is because the function f is continuous is inside the set where your function is equal to a k or when it's equal to a k plus one okay and since the distribution of this function f you know if you think of it as a random variable can have at most countably many jumps you can of course avoid um, those jumps you can choose a k such that the probability of these level sets is zero for all k okay and then um, you you use condition five and and you get this convergence for uh, step function approximation and 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 that proves uh, one okay so that's all i wanted to say um, about this portmanteau theorem now in this section we will already see application of a couple of these different equivalent conditions okay so we'll see right now application um, of, of, of number two when you just limit yourself to bounded Lipschitz functions and a little bit later we'll see a situation where it's very convenient to look at um, the condition in terms of uh, for example closed sets okay so we'll see that these are indeed um, very convenient and very useful all right so let's give an application of of this portmanteau theorem to the so-called convergence of empirical uh, measures okay or also known as Varadarian's theorem okay okay so in this um, setting here we consider an iid sequence of random variables defined on the same probability space and taking values in in the same metric space s okay and for this particular result this metric space with the metric d will be separable now let's consider what is called the empirical measure of this on this sequence Okay, empirical probability measure actually it's a sequence of probability measures that for every n if you take a Borel set so if you take a in in the Borel uh, sets on on this metric space then you define this probability denoted mu n of this set simply by counting how many points in this sequence xi fall into this set okay and taking a proportion among the first tens 
Okay, and it's it's a random measure, right? Because it implicitly depends on the point omega in our probability space through this sequence xi. And then the th theorem says that this probability measure mu n converges in the sense of probability measures, converges weakly to the distribution of just one of these random variables, uh, x1, but because it's a random statement, you know, it happens with probability 1. So the statement is that probability that mu n converges to mu weakly happens with probability 1, okay? And of course you can write it out, you know, just to emphasize that, so, sorry, to, to emphasize that uh, this is a random measure, the empirical measure is a random measure, it just means that probability of the set of points in your probability space omega such that this random measure converges to mu, where mu is the distribution, the law of, let's say, x1. Right, that this this probability is one, or if you like, you can write it out um, in terms of the definition that probability that for all continuous bounded functions on our metric space, the integrals converge. Now, of course, what's the integral with respect to mu n? This is just the average. Right, and what's the integral with respect to mu? Well, since it's the law of x1, this is just the expectation, f of x1. Right, and what we see here, it's now becoming a natural statement because if we looked at the statement for one function f, this would be just a strong law of large numbers, right? And the whole point here is that we are making this statement simultaneously for all continuous bounded functions on our metric space, right? And the issue is that, you know, the strong law of large numbers for a given function f can have some exceptional set where the limiting statement is, is violated, but it, it, it must have probability zero. And of course, if you had countably many functions in your statement, this would be automatic because you know the the exceptional sets would not would still accumulate to to a set of um, probability zero but in bounded uh, continuous functions can form an uncountable set so that's the whole point and the proof of this statement of course is will be a reduction of uh, this statement from uncountably many functions to some countable collection of functions. All right, and the way this is done using portmanteau theorem is, is as follows. Okay, so first of all, uh, this is the place where we use um, this idea that you can think of your metric space as essentially being a compact. If you are allowed to change your metric to some equivalent metric, right? So there is a lemma in the notes, which I'm not going to uh, discuss right now with kind of a standard real analysis proof, um, essentially very, very similar to the proof of banach alaoglu theorem in functional analysis, which, which says that you can find an equivalent metric E such that your metric space with this equivalent metric will become totally bounded. In other words, you know, its its completion will be a compact space. space. Okay, so, in particular, immediately we can just rephrase the above probability in terms of bounded continuous functions on this space with an equivalent metric because the set of bounded continuous function is not affected, right? So, and then you have the same statement. Now, the way um, we use Portmanteau theorem is, is at this step. So when we go so from here to the next probability, right, we uh, this is where we will use Portmanteau theorem to say that it's enough 
to check convergence on all bounded Lipschitz functions on this space. And then, so, okay, so what happened here, let me uh, stop writing the, the sequence here and, and simply say we, we start with continuous bounded functions on a metric space and by changing the metric we rewrite it as continuous bounded functions on uh, this metric space with an equivalent metric. Then we go to bounded Lipschitz functions on this metric and then we look at the completion. So actually, you know, you could also look at the completion and look at bounded continuous functions on the completion right away. And let me denote completion of S by T. Okay. But instead what we do is we go first to bounded Lipschitz function and say that if you look at bounded Lipschitz functions on the completion, then uh, by artzel ascoli theorem, okay, you can choose a dense uh, countable collection. So this is this this will be separable, right? So you can use choose a countable collection of functions here. Let me call them f hat, which is dense with respect to L infinity norm. Okay, so it uh, these functions approximate uniformly uh, bounded Lipschitz functions, and then we say that. Well, this implies that you have a countable collection in your original space S, which also approximate all bounded Lipschitz functions uniformly. And of course, they are obtained by just taking the functions you found on the completion and restricting them to the original space. Okay, And because this is a dense subset with respect to L infinity norm, if you have the convergence um, you know the strong law in the strong law of large numbers for this countable collection by the density it uh, this, the the limiting statement you know uh, is true for all functions and so the proof is complete okay so that's that's how the proof goes but of course you know it's important to emphasize here uh, an important point okay why we had to use portmanteau theorem in this step here and then use arzelas coli there why didn't we do it at the level of continuous bounded functions in the previous step because we also know that on this completion t which is a compact space right we of course i i don't i have to maybe emphasize here this was this is a compact space because s with this new metric was totally bounded right it's the continuous bounded functions would also be a separable um, space with respect to l infinity norm so we can choose countable dense collection there too so why did we have to use portmanteau theorem so maybe it's a good idea to pause this video and to you know Try to think for a second what what is the point before before I give the answer to this. Okay, so the reason here is, of course, that given a bounded Lipschitz function on the original space, you can extend it to the completion. Okay, in the previous in this previous section about bounded Lipschitz functions, there is an extension theorem that says that you can you know, extend your bounded Lipschitz function from a subset of the space to the whole space without changing the bounded Lipschitz norm. So there is an extension. And of course, this extension here is unique because it's just a completion, right? The set S is dense in, in, in T. So there is a one-to-one -one correspondence actually here between bounded Lipschitz functions on the set S, on the space S, and the completion. So when we find a collection there and we, we you know that statement applies to all functions back in the original space when we when we <clears throat> consider this restriction to to s right while um, on 
the set of bounded continuous functions, maybe a function cannot be extended uh, to the completion. And maybe to kind of clarify this point, we can say that actually the extension theorem here is an overkill because in the, set, in the, set, in the setting of the completion, you can see this the fact that this extension exists just by appealing to the definition of bounded Lipschitz function and the definition of the completion, right? That how the completion is defined, you consider a Cauchy sequence in your metric space and then you would like to extend um, so okay let's say this sequence it might not converge in your converge in your original space but now it will converge to a point in the completion and you would like to extend your function f bounded Lipschitz function f to this point okay of course you would define this as a limit f s n along this sequence okay but does this limit exist well for continuous bounded functions it may not exist but the reason it exists for bounded Lipschitz function is functions is because the set of values um, along this sequence will be also a, a Cauchy in on the real line which just follows from the definition of bounded Lipschitz function, right? That you can control the increment of the values of this function by the distance between these points in the sequence. So um, the, these values are Cauchy in R, so the limit does exist. Okay, but for uh, con just the continuous functions, you may not have this extension that's why we had to use the portmanteau theorem first and then apply this this construction okay using the completion um, and this idea that you know by changing the metric you can think of your space as almost a compact space right we we had to pass through the through the bounded Lipschitz functions here okay so that's uh, one application of portmanteau theorem, we'll see another one um, a little bit later when we compare um, the bounded Lipschitz and Prokhorov-Levy metric that we are going to define, define next.